The Misanthrope, also known as The Cantankerous Lover, stands as a satirical masterpiece by the French playwright Jean-Baptiste Poquelin, famously published under the pseudonym Molière. This play satirizes the social norms and imperfections of the French aristocratic class while shedding light on universal moral shortcomings observed in people worldwide. Diverging from the satirical works of its time, which often featured flat characters, the misanthrope employs dynamic characters to deliver a more nuanced critique of French society. Noteworthy is its departure from Molière's other works, as it dedicates a significant portion of its focus to developing a rich array of characters rather than propelling the plot forward. Despite its initial commercial failure, the misanthrope has endured over time as Molière's magnum opus. The narrative follows the discontented French aristocrat Alceste, who expresses his grievances about widespread corruption in France to his friend Falinti. While Falinti refutes Alceste's claims, Alceste persists, emphasizing the importance of honesty and integrity. The conversation unveils Alceste's involvement in a lawsuit. The plot unfolds as Arant, a marquis, enters the scene, proposing friendship with Alceste. Alceste, however, insists on learning more about each other before committing. Arant seeks Alceste's opinion on a sonnet he penned, only to be insulted by Alceste's suggestion to seek alternative employment. Alceste then encounters Selamine, the woman he loves, and the owner of the house, where the comedy transpires. He reproaches her for entertaining numerous suitors, to which Selamine responds that her flirtations are harmless, reserving true love for Alceste. As Selamine's other suitors convene with her and her cousin Elianti, engaging in gossip about the court, Alceste threatens to leave but remains. Despite Alceste's discontent, Selamine's sharp criticisms captivate her suitors. Alceste objects to perceived hypocrisy, only to be ignored. Elianti remarks on Alceste's peculiar behavior, suggesting that he should be praising Selamine instead of disparaging her and her friends. The plot takes a legal turn when a legal officer informs Alceste that Arant has filed a lawsuit over the unkind criticism of his poem. Alceste departs to examine the details, leaving Clitandra and Acasti an opportunity to discuss their love for Selamine. Despite Acasti's arrogance, he despairs over Selamine not reciprocating his love, despite his wealth and handsomeness. The two men decide that if one of them faces outright rejection, the other will support the victor in winning Selamine's true love. Just as Selamine departs, Alceste returns. Arsino praises his integrity and offers to assist him in securing a position at court. Alceste hesitates, prompting her to reveal a letter proving Selamine's infidelity. They leave to examine the letter. In their absence, Valenti and Elianti inform the marshals of France about Alceste's rudeness. While Valenti criticizes him, Elianti expresses respect for Alceste's adherence to his personal values. She admits that Selamine is uncertain about her true feelings and conveys that she might consider Alceste if he wasn't fixated on Selamine. Valenti then reveals his attraction to Elianti and his willingness to reciprocate her advances. At that moment, an upset Alceste enters, determined to punish Selamine for her deceit and pursuit of another suitor. Alceste suggests creating revenge by starting a relationship with Elianti, but she advises against recklessness. Elianti and Falinti exit as Selamine appears. Alceste criticizes her, but she defends herself, calling him foolish for believing the letter. Dubois, Alceste's servant, rushes in, warning him to flee as he has lost the lawsuit and is now a wanted man. Alceste leaves to gather more information and encounters Falinti, who recommends challenging the legal outcome. Stubbornly, Alceste refuses, citing it as a prime example of the court's corruption. He declares his intention to become a willful pariah and plans to ask Selamine to accompany him one final time. Orant and Alceste arrive together, demanding that Selamine choose between them. She declines, leaving the decision to Elianti. However, Elianti arrives and refuses the responsibility. Acasti and Clitandra arrive with a letter from Selamine insulting both men. Arsino and Falinti return, renouncing Selamine. In the comedy's conclusion, Alceste remains the only man willing to court Selamine. He offers forgiveness on the condition that she lives with him in isolation. Surprised, Selamine says she is too young, agreeing only to marriage. Enraged, Alceste retracts his love for Selamine. She departs, and Alceste deems it unfair to request Elian's devotion. She agrees and decides to pursue Falinti. Alone, Alceste is followed by Elianti and Falinti, who aim to change his mind about disappearing forever. 
A play where only a couple of minor and inauspicious characters find happiness, the misanthrope critiques the archetype of the stubborn Frenchman who rejects social convention. Ultimately, this attitude leads to self-isolation instead of enlightenment for the protagonist or society, portraying the dismantling of social convention as a futile endeavor for one person to undertake alone. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.